everybody! <laughs> hello? Hello? Hello. Welcome to Chatting with Doug. I thought you froze again for a second there, Doug, but you didn't. Oh, okay. But the way you, the, you were like moved yourself in such a way where I paused because I was like, oh no. <laughs> Did Doug get disconnected? Can I, I not just, hear him? But no. <laughs> I was just waiting for the cue and it was a good cue. Yeah, you cued well. You cued well. You, you're, you're just too good at doing that, that kind of miming there, Doug. Just too good at it. Okay. Well, thank you. God damn it, Doug. You can't do that to us, okay? You cannot do that to I, us. I, I unplugged the fridge and the printer because that's how technology works, apparently. I don't freeze up when that happens. We don't drop the connection when that happens, so. Hey, it's weird, something. Weird world. Uh, thank you all for this hype train. I see we already have a level three hype train. Thank you all so much. We appreciate that. Um, so I am going to get to the rules so that we can get to the questions. Uh, first and foremost, foremost, wow, if I could speak, that'd be great. Right. First and foremost, we give priority to the bit messages since that of some real world money spent. Um, sometimes we do have time for highlighted questions towards the end of stream, but please save your highlighting for the end of stream. If you highlight it now, I'm not gonna be able to scroll up and uh, take a look at it. Also, highlighting a question does not guarantee that we are going to see or read it. Uh, please do not repeat yourself over and over again in chat. You can get timed out or even banned if you're going to continuously do that. Um, we do get behind on the bit messages, sometimes up to an hour. Um, and when that happens, there's no need for you to repeat your question with the bit messages either. I've got a list. It is very, very rare that it does get um, skipped. So don't stress about it. We're probably just behind. Uh, please, no spoilers. I know everyone wants to roast the hell out of Doug for his Guardians 3 take. And but... you will. <laughs> this is a public stoning. <laughs> but no spoilers for Guardians, please. People have not had a chance to see it. It's only been out for one weekend. No Guardians spoilers. No spoilers for um, new stuff that has come out. Please, please, please. Uh, watch the length of your question. The longer it is, the faster I have to read it, and the more likely it is that we are going to uh, miss the point, and then I don't have time to repeat it. Um, also, don't have too many parts to a question. Um, something three is probably the max that you want to restrict your parts to if it's absolutely necessary that you have multiple parts to a question. Um maybe check to see if someone hasn't asked your question already. It's not that it's a bad thing. It's just that we feel bad if you are the fourth person today to ask what the next review is. And we just have to be like, well, we already said, um, so just check. It's, it's, we just don't want to give you the least value for your bits. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Wonderful. Great. Uh, that Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Hello, Duggan. Hello, Heather. How are you guys doing tonight? Guy, I hope you spelled that with a three. <laughs> no, there's no three in Duggan. <laughs> How dare I, Hopefully a zero instead of an O. There you go. <laughs> That'll be the compromise. Honest reviewer, thank you so much for that 12 month subscription, a whole Ooh. heckin' year. Welcome back, appreciate that. Sup, Doug and Heather. Doug, how are you enjoying Owl House and what episode are you on? Uh, I am on the second or third episode of season two, and I already like season one a great deal. I'm already liking season two more. I think they're integrating in sort of the overarching story uh, much more. Overarching? Overarching. What's the... It's overarching. I think either one is fine. Okay. Um, I really like the way they're working it in more instead of just having like, oh, by the way, here's the big bad guy at the end. Here's his backstory. Here's everything about him. Here's the history of the world. Like, they're really working in sort of like all the side characters, the big threat uh, in much more. And then the backstory is much better. Uh, I, you know, I just saw the one where they uh, uh, see Ida's mother and I really like, they don't, she's an antagonist, but she's not a villain. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really like the way they make her sympathetic. You see where she's coming from. Uh and I think there's a lot of interesting commentary you can read into that episode. Uh, so I, I really, really dug that. Um, yeah, I, I'm liking that a great deal. I, I really thought when they go into the bigger story, I was going to like it less, but they're working it in much better, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on Belos in Owl House now? 
Bellos, Bellos. I'm sorry, it's B E L O S. I've never seen Owl House. I don't know. I for all the characters. Oh, the main bad guy. I still haven't seen you know much of him, but again, I like that he's worked in much more into the story. Like you know who he is, you know what his plan is, you know what he's up to. Now it's kind of okay to keep him a mystery because you know a little bit for him to be intimidating. You know, he's the one that's kind of after him and everything. So uh, just that little change makes a big difference, I think. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. In Pirates 5, Paul McCartney says the line, a skeleton goes into a bar and orders a beer and a mop. This may very well be a coincidence, but I'm starting to wonder if they gave him that line because he used to have a mop top in the Beatles. <laughs> um... That wouldn't be my guess, but who knows? Very well could be. Yeah, I don't know. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Has Rob seen Guardians 3? And if so, do you know what he thought? No, not yet. I really want to know his thoughts. Because again, so far I'm like one of the few lone assholes who didn't like it. And I didn't hate it. I did not hate it. Uh, and like I said, I do think there's a lot. Of, I said, I think there's a lot of people that are going to like it. They are liking it. Um, it just didn't work for me. So I'm curious to see uh, what he thinks of it. But he hasn't seen it yet. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hello, Doug and Co. I would like to bring to your attention a Disney slash Fox Studio movie releasing this month on the 12th called Crater. It will be on Disney Plus. Hope to have you review it for Disney December. Uh, how do you spell it? Crater. C-R-A-T-E-R. Uh, Crater. I, oh, well, okay. Lots of shots of Crater. Let's try Crater movie. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, th this almost said, this one says May twelfth, so this is like yeah. this I month on the twelfth is what yeah. they they said. Uh, okay, I have never heard of this. I haven't Nor seen any passport or anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, I will keep an eye out for that. Adam Grunther, thank you for the hundred bits. Which Guardians villain do you like more, Ronan or the High Evolutionary? And remember, no spoilers. Uh, ugh, I I don't know why I'm, I totally. Blank there. Uh, say it one more time. I'm sorry. Ronan from the first one or the High Evolutionary from the, the latest one? From uh, Guardians 3. Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, the first one was more quiet, but this latest one, his plan was really interesting. That's kind of what pissed me off even more. I wanted to find him really interesting. But he was just so shouting. All the, even when things went his way, he was shouting. Um... Yeah, I. The other was just so quiet in the way he said everything. He was kind of funny. Um, if you could combine, if you could give the backstory of this dude to the dude in the first movie, uh, that would have worked. But uh, yeah, I could not get into just him yelling everything. It so got on my nerves. Alexander, thank you for the hundred bits. What's your favorite Calvin Fish Odor centric episode of Bob's Burgers? Um. I think I like the, uh, what was it, April Fool's uh, one where he kept playing pranks on Bob and he wanted him to prank him back. And even that was kind of all one big April Fool's joke. But then he thinks he figured it out, but then he didn't. And there's all these, like, how many layers to it is there. Uh, that was pretty funny. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite Henry Wrinkler role? Uh... Uh, you know, oh, gosh, I can't speak. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm watching Barry right now. I think that's it. He's uh, incredible in Barry, I, isn't he? I, I didn't know he could do all that. <laughs> He's incredible in Barry. Yeah, I. Uh, it's you know, unreal. He, you know, we obviously know him as the Fonz, and then he always just kind of played the nice guy, and he played it great. He's always he's a very you know a, you know very big puppy dog eyed you know dude and everything. But uh, yeah, when as soon as I saw him play this character, I'm just like. Do we get him for the whole series? Because that'll be really cool. And yeah, he's like one of the main characters. Uh, yeah, I I really, I, I like not just the character, but I like that he's playing him because it really showed a side of him I didn't know he could play. And it's really great. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Top three Danny DeVito movies, either acting or directing. Uh, I do really like Hoffa. Watching that again was really cool. Um, oh, A War of the Roses, hands down, is probably my favorite. Um. And then, uh, try, try to think. You know, just for the performance, it sounds weird because I don't like the character, but I love his acting in it. Uh, Batman Returns, because I really don't see Danny DeVito in that role. 
Uh, I just really see this ugly monster creature that bites people's noses and grunts all the time. I just don't see DeVito in that. Uh, and I think that's really impressive. That's a Z-Nerd. Thank you for the 100 bits. So the first time in 10 years, I rewatched 42, the story of an American legend. And I gotta say, it's great. Have you seen it? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? No, I hold on for Amer uh, American legend. I'm trying to remember that had good or bad, but I thought it had bad buzz. Oh, maybe not. Uh, people on IMDb seem to like it. Um, trying to find the Rotten Tomatoes here. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, it has good buzz on Rotten Tomatoes too. All right, uh, I will try to check it out. I don't know why I got. I must have gotten something backwards because I always thought I remember hearing it wasn't good, but uh, it seems to be pretty decent. Uh, okay, I'll try to check it out. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Which of Rocket's friends did you like the most? Lila the Otter, the Otter, Teefs the Walrus, or Floor the Rabbit? And remember, no spoilers. Uh, probably the Otter. We got to know the Otter the best. Um, otters are cute <laughs> they're adorable i like the robotic arms and everything uh yeah no and, and, and all of that just for the record all of that i had no problem with. <laughs> i thought that was all done uh very very well rocket's uh backstory fbl thank you for the hundred bits thoughts on the trailer for the upcoming wes anderson movie asteroid city uh you know just like every single one of his movies i look at i say uh this again, we're doing this shtick, just the typical Wes Anderson shtick, but then I usually see them and I usually love them. So um, I think the fact that I'm looking at Count going, eh, is a good sign. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. First movie you ever saw with your wife? Uh, <laughs> um, I I'm assuming it was before, they're talking about like before we got married. Yeah, so the first... <laughs> The first date we had, we, we did dinner and a movie. <laughs> we thought this was a charming little independent movie. It's called The Kite Runner. You see these two little oh, kids holding no. a guy. You know what this movie's about. I love it that book. Not, I adore it, that book. Oh, it's a, it's a very good movie, but it is not a date movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> At all. We were just kind of like you know thank god we got along because uh yeah that's one of those movies where if you uh told someone i've got to take you to this flick i hear it's great like that could really damp it it's possible you would not have a second date <laughs> but thankfully uh uh we, we did both like the movie but it wasn't at all what we thought it was gonna be <laughs> sailor aaron thank you for the hundred bits hi there doug and heather great review of megan today so i've done the most or I've got some most excellent news for you all. I'll have two titles now, Auntie and Godmother. My sister asked me if I wanted oh. to be my niece's godmother, and I said, yes, so very happy. Oh, so cool. Congrats. Oh, my God, so sweet. That's really awesome. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. While you said you weren't a fan of either movies, do you like Ant-Man 3 or Guardians, or Guardians 3 more? I got to go with... Yeah, I gotta go with Guardians Three. Okay. More the 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 story's better. It's a better story. Uh, yeah, there, there's more creativity to it. Um, yeah, I, I think I gotta go with it. I, I I did feel a lot for Rocket in those scenes where I can't remember really feeling much for anyone in uh, Ant Man Three. So yeah, I'll probably say that. FBL, thank you for the hundred bits. Favorite nonfiction novel. Uh Man, a nonfiction novel. I don't. I don't know if I've read that many, honestly. Because uh, if I'm gonna read nonfiction, I really like biographies. I like autobiographies, especially. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm sure I must have read one, but I'm just completely blanket. I don't know. I, I don't seek them out. I, I'm afraid I don't have a good answer. <laughs> I know a lot of the nonfiction stuff I've been reading more recently is more like comedian books, you know? <laughs> Like, mm, yeah. Like one of the more ones I read more recently was uh, Megan Mullaney and um, oh my gosh, my brain John? just went dead. Not John Mullaney. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I'm saying her name wrong. Oh my gosh, my brain is so dead, and I'm so sorry. <sighs> is it Megan with a three? No, it's not Megan with a three. Wow. All right, never mind. My brain is dead. Uh, uh, Malali. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, I just looked thank up. you. <laughs> she did a book with her husband, and it's amazing. Who's the, the husband's <laughs> name is the one I'm blanking on, and that's why I'm 
ki kicking Ron myself. Ron Swanson, right? Yes, Ron Swanson. Nick Offerman. <laughs> yes, thank you. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I'm just getting that because I'm literally Googling it right now. So I'm cheating. I'm totally cheating. Point is, they wrote a book together. It's hilarious. It's amazing. That's the last, oh, cool. that's the last nonfiction book I wrote. I read. <laughs> <laughs> anyway and even that even that's not a non-fiction novel you know, which is uh interesting it's like i always kind of well, knew what it was but it wasn't until i saw oh is it an actual like story story like one long story i mean a novel is a book i guess i didn't no but i, I always think a, a novel is like a narrative i thought like well, well in the movie capote he was talking about he, that he was claiming he created the nonfiction novel which is like it is a story huh. one thing but it was about this crime that these two uh, apparently committed. Interesting. And, but he was telling it like it was fiction, like a story, a beginning, middle, and end, but it really happened hmm. kind of thing. I could be wrong about that. It was a long time since I saw that movie. But I when know. I heard that, I was kind of like, well, that's what a nonfiction novel. Like, I kind of knew, but I wasn't sure. Uh, I, I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. You're, Honestly, I, mean, I probably I don't know because you're a teacher and you probably know right. more about this. <laughs> I mean, but I taught middle school so i guess we weren't we weren't being pedantic about the difference between a novel and a book <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you read it good <laughs> fbl thank you for the hundred bits thoughts on jonah hill's directorial debut mid 90s oh i really liked it and that was I'm, I'm not gonna say that was my childhood but there were a lot of things i recognized from my childhood in there the only thing that i think everybody brings up it ends crazy abruptly which is really <laughs> weird um but uh yeah i i recognized a lot of things in that movie uh where i was just like yeah i did that or, I, or at the very least i have friends that did that uh, i wore that shirt i wore that you know like it it, it, it rang pretty true adam grunther thank you for the hundred bits what are your thoughts on the character hootie in the owl house oh he's fun and man what a thin line between funny and annoying i i'm always like man you almost crossed that line but nope it, it, you're pretty funny and they use him just the right amount too i always think they're gonna overuse him uh, but he he does become a main character but he doesn't overstay his welcome especially with that voice uh so yeah i think they handle that pretty well Elite Gamer, thank you so much for that nine-month subscription. I Welcome do. back. Appreciate it. Hello, Heather and Doug, except it's spelled with uh, a three and a four for me and a D-zero-U-6. Mm. That's clever. Oh, that's for good. Doug. I like that. Uh, hope you're do both doing well. So I was curious, what are both of your thoughts on the Little Mermaid, Spider-Verse, and the new Transformers films coming out? Also, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone at the Channel Awesome Studio. You bunch of crazy individu individuals uh, make me laugh and have inspired me to try doing YouTube myself. Seriously, thank you all. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's so funny. At first, I just heard the Little Mermaid Spider-Verse. I was just like, whoa, I missed that crossover, man. They're really going to all the universes. Uh, but yeah, Little Mermaid Spider-Verse. And then what were the other ones? New Transformers. Oh, okay. Uh, Little Mermaid doesn't look good. I hope I'm wrong. Spider-Verse looks amazing. I hope I'm right. And uh, New Transformers looks, eh, I hope I'm kind of wrong. Uh, Shinra HR, thank you for the hundred bits. Hey Doug, what's your favorite concert you've been to? Uh, it, I went to one in uh, Philadelphia recently with in uh, Philadelphia with with James and Brad uh, to see the Slipknot, and uh, Corey actually like pointed us out on stage and said, "Hey Doug, James, Brad, how are you?" And it's like that was pretty cool. It's like okay, yeah, we, we know the guy and stuff like that. But but James was just like, "We were a part of the show." <laughs> show and he just absolutely loved that guy i think he was saying like the first concert he ever saw was at uh this place so it was Aww. at this uh so he said that was really something like the and he said it had a big impact on him so to go back there and hear his name on stage like really really meant a lot fbl thank you for the hundred bits thoughts on the giver book and movie i haven't read it or seen i hear the book is good the movie is bad from what i hear I adore the book. I used to teach it every year for six or seven years, and I still never got tired of it. Love The Giver. Uh, the movie was actually better than I expected it to be. Uh, hmm. It's not amazing, but it's also not the worst adaptation of a movie I've ever seen. So hmm. it right. rose above my expectations. All right. Randy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. I would like to recommend a show for a Disney-sember, Milo Murphy's Law. It is by the same creators as Phineas and Ferb. 
<laughs> I yeah, I probably will see it at some point. I think I saw like the first episode. It sadly wasn't grabbing me, but I'm like, I do like this team. I, I, I like this group. I like this idea. The idea is really funny. Uh, you know, like the person Murphy's Law is based on. Uh, so I will watch it all at some point. I don't know when yet because I still got a few other shows to get through. But uh, yeah, I will. Maybe within like the next year or so. Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the 100 bits. I saw Guardians 3 and it was all right. Loved Rocket's backstory. Act 1 and 2 were slow, but I thought Act 3 was perfect in the action and emotion and where we leave the characters. Yeah, uh, most people really, really like it. Um, and like I said, I think it's, uh, I definitely think there's a crowd out there that are really, that's really going to enjoy it. Well, they've proven they really, really enjoy it. So yeah, you're definitely not alone. <laughs> Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug... I'd like to ask you this in your native language. <clears throat> Christmas! Christmas, Christmas, Christmas! <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> Catherine Zeta-Jones. Christmas? <laughs> um, I was frozen today! Ah, uh, of course. Blake the Nothing, thank you for the hundred bits. Hey guys, any chance of a convention appearance near Philly in the future? Would love to see y'all at Too Many Games. Oh, I've been there before. Uh, that's a fun one. Um... It's not planned, and I really, it, it, this is something I've been falling behind on. I really it, it should reach out as well and actually, like, look for conventions and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, if you do want to see us out there, you know, always th th reach out and ask, you know, uh, uh, the con, you know, to have us out as well. You know, that'd obviously be helpful. But, yeah, I, I should I should actually be looking for them as well. And I have done that one before. Even if I'm not there, it's a fun one uh, to go to. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the MCU Blade reboot getting shut down because of the writer's strike? Uh, I mean, sucks. <laughs> I, I, I like Blade. I want to see what new spin they were going to do on. I will say this. It is one where the style of the original was so cool and so unique and both of its time, but also kind of timeless mm. at the same time that I don't know what they would do to really give it like a new fresh take that I would say, yeah, I'm excited for that. But uh, that's also one of the reasons I do kind of want to see it. I want to see what they attempt. So uh, yeah, it, it sucks. It's a bummer, but um, yeah, I guess a lot of productions are shut down right now because of it. Adam Grunther, thank you for the hundred bits. I'm sorry. I'm a super uncultured swine. Can you explain the meaning of your joke where you say Doyle? I'm trying to remember where I used it. So I know what it's a reference to, but I can't remember what review I use it in. Uh, if I just say Doyle, uh, that's a reference to uh, the mask, uh, the two cops, uh, you know, the, the dumb one and the smart one, and the dumb one's named Doyle, and the smart one always just go Doyle like that. So that's what that's referencing. <laughs> Talkative Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. My issue on Mario movie. Peach does most of the fighting against Bowser. She is one of those female characters who is perfect at everything. Mario is mostly incompetent and Luigi is captured during the movie. The movie is good, but you might as well call it Princess Peach because Mario and Luigi only do 10% of the work. Well, it's yes and no. I half agree because... My issue was more I want Mario and Luigi together more because yeah, it is called Mario Brothers. But at the same time, it is a hero's journey. So I do mm -hmm. like the idea of him like getting better. And, you know, he's coming from a place where everybody kind of sees him as a loser in Brooklyn. But, you know, here he can, you know, get better and stuff like that. But it's not especially deep journey. <laughs> you know, I mean, I like the yeah. movie, but I'm not going to say it's, it's very deep. So I like the idea of somebody kind of showing him around and, you know, going above and beyond but again i think that also sort of shows in the last third when when she's you know with bowser and like oh shit i gotta give myself up to save everybody that then he has to rise to the occasion because he is kind of still seen as like oh, okay you got lucky a few times but you're still not the hero and that's you know the third act you know downer moment where suddenly they have to prove themselves and everything so i get why they did it uh my big thing was that i wish mario and luigi did more uh, together because they just kind of do a little thing at the end and that's about it right well and also they kind of state that peach grew up there so of course she knows how to do those obstacle <laughs> yeah, courses because exactly. that's just like what they do for fun you know <laughs> mm -hmm. that disney nerd thank you for the hundred bits heather i think it's time to replace that sub notification with the new meme me used during the megan review today <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I put my put, still put my Pennywise face on her though doing the dance. <laughs> 
Cameron Blythe, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug and Heather. Since you did an NC on Megan, do you think you'll do a review on Child's Play 2019 remake? I still have to see it. I hear it's not bad, uh, surprisingly. If anything else, I just want to know what Mark Hamill as Chucky sounds like. Uh, so, yeah, I, I still got to check it out. FBL, oh. thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Tim Allen movie Crazy on the Outside? I don't even think I've heard of it. Uh, hold on. Crazy on the outside. Sometimes if I see like a picture. Okay, I <laughs> back in the old days when I went to the video store, uh, I would see this all the time, like at the rental stores. But uh, wow, 2010, this really is old. Um, okay, not that old, but uh, whoa, 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 hold on. The Rotten Tomato score is like uh, star 8% on Rotten Tomato, 29% audience score. So this sounds great. Um, I will... Um, not be rushing out to see this, but uh, when a score is that low, I, I do become a little interested. His name is Tommy Zelda. What an odd... This movie sounds odd. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite uh, pizza topping? Uh, sausage. A sausage or like a meat lover's uh, pizza I really like. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. I was wondering if you'd do a Disney Sember on Disney Channel show. It's called American Dragon Jake Long. The main character is voiced by the same guy who does Zuko's voice in Avatar. Dante. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've only seen a little bit. It looks good. It looks like a fun show, but um, uh, I have not seen all of it. I'll, I'll get around to it. It's one of those I have on the list for like later down the line because I did miss it. Like, I never saw like the Proud Family either, or, like Recess or any of them. So, uh, but I know a lot of people grew up with it. So I am curious to see like what, you know, people grew up with and how it helped shape them. And so I also heard they're decent shows too. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, can you review Doctor Strange 2? I'm not a horror fan, but this is easily my favorite horror film. And ironically, <laughs> it's from the MCU. Wanda is wonderfully terrifying, but if you've been following along since Avengers 2, she has an impressive arc and you buy her descent into madness. Uh, life kept taking from her and she feels like she's owed something. Uh, I really like that movie. The one thing, it's funny you mentioned Wanda because that's both the thing I like and dislike at the same time because, like, we just... Doug? Doug? Oh, there you are. You're back. Oh, my God. Oh, it actually cut out. And both the fridge and the printer are unplugged. Oh, no. Oh, God. I guess we'll have to see what happens with that. Okay. Um, just making sure you can still see me and everything, Yes, right? yeah, now we can. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, man, even my connection, like, I'm just watching on Twitch. It's, like, really, really delayed. Crazy. Uh, okay, anyway. Um, I was saying that uh, uh, I did disney Sember of it, so you can check it out there. I don't know if I'll do an NC review, but I really liked it, too. The one thing, it's funny you mentioned Wanda, because I was saying it's both the thing that I thought was done well and not done well, because we already did it in WandaVision. Uh, like, she comes to the same conclusion and everything, but at the same time, I like a little bit more how they did it as a horror film in this, and I like she's kind of the villain in it. She, you know, kind of turns into all the weird Sam Raimi, uh, you know, distortions and stuff like that. So that's more up my alley, but I know a lot of people like WandaVision too, but either way, it's it's definitely repeated, which is odd. But uh, if you want to know my thoughts, just watch the uh, Disney December of it, or Untitled Review Show for that matter. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, could we get an NC review for Aliens in the Attic? It's a funny and entertaining kids film that's a little underrated. Uh, Aliens in the Attic. Uh, 2009, I've never heard of this. Oh, Austin Butler, apparently, is in it. Um, and other people I have never heard of. Uh, I'll try to check it out. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, Doug, if you can, check out the YouTube channel Cinema Therapy. They did an episode on Puss in Boots, The Last Wish recently. Please check out their videos if you can. I always say I'm going to, and then I never do. <laughs> and so I have nothing against them at all. I always see the little thumbnails. I'm always like, oh, I should watch them. And then just work or something gets in the way. Uh, I should. I should. Um, I, I keep seeing the Mario one keeps popping up over and over. Uh, yeah, I should check it out. Fat Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> Heather, Doug, and Walter, I'm sorry, but I have to do the most inhumane thing you guys to you guys for your blasphemous takes on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm 
gonna report you guys on Twitter and let the obnoxious film critics rip your souls out. <laughs> You're acting like this is the first time, man. <laughs> It'd be better just throwing a stone at the screen and having me go, ow, oh! like that. That would hurt more. <laughs> Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, are still getting an NC review for the 2003 Peter Pan film for its 20th anniversary? It's so underrated. Uh, Yeah, I'll probably do it closer to when it came out because I didn't come out in like November or something like that. Uh, so I might just do it uh, there because um, I do think it's an interesting film to talk about. I can't remember if I liked it. I don't think I quite did, but there is enough interesting things in it that that's worth talking about. Just visually alone, uh, I thought it was pretty cool. SSR or SS25R, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug and Heather, hope you're both having a good week so far. In your opinions, how long does something have to be before you label it nostalgic? Um, I mean, technically, you can, you know, label anything nostalgia. Like, you know, be going like this. Well, it's in the past now, so you can technically say it's nostalgic. But uh, if I have really good feelings about this, it's nostalgic. But uh, usually most people allow, like, 10 years, something like that, um, in order to have, like, a memory of it that you probably remember more fondly than it really was. That's kind of always, you know, the rose-colored glasses of nostalgia, as they say. Uh, but there's no official cutoff really, uh, despite what a lot of people in the comments uh, will tell you. But uh, yeah, most people usually say like, you know, 10 years or so. Talkative Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you expect uh, Kamala and Captain Marvel to have the same relationship as Peter and Tony in the MCU? Like Kamala tells Carol she wants to be just like her and Carol says she wants her to be better. Uh, why am I? Oh, okay. Kamala Khan. Yeah, no, no, no. I actually was looking at who Peter and Tony were. Oh, like, oh, the MC. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah. Peter Parker, Tony Stark. That makes more sense. Um, uh, I don't know. I love this one. I love this one comment somebody uh, left when I gave my thoughts on the trailer. Uh, they just said, "Man, the actress who plays uh, Kamala, her back's really gonna hurt carrying that whole movie, man." Because uh, <laughs> that that is kind of my thought. She's the only one that I'm really like excited to see. But I do like seeing her interact off other people. I love the idea of they can switch places like yeah. out of nowhere like if someone's in canada and somebody's here and somebody like whatever says a word they suddenly switch that's that's an exciting new idea and i feel like both as a superhero film and like comedically that can be really really fun uh like that's the thing that got me the most excited about that movie um but yeah some of the tropes like we are not a team i'm like oh we got to do this, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see how they work with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I also like, I do want to see her in a team, Kamala and stuff like that. So I'm hoping just getting them all together will, uh, you know, create some good chemistry. Brand Omega, thank you for the 100 bits. Just laughed so hard when you added me me to the Megan dance. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. Jay Boss and Fran, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, I know that you did a sibling rivalry on Star Trek Into Darkness, but from one Trekkie to another, could you give an overview of Star Trek Beyond right here and right now? Uh, let's see. The um, passing of Spock, you know, was unfortunate. And yes, even the destruction of the Enterprise was surprising. But, uh, you know, when you see them on that alien planet and band together after they're separated, uh, I think the chemistry works well. I'm sorry, that's the original Star Trek three. Let me go to this other Star Trek three. <clears throat> Losing Spock was unfortunate and seeing the Enterprise destroyed uh, was a bit of a surprise. But when they uh, get back together on the alien planet and find each other again, uh, I thought it really worked. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, whose eyes would you say are the most intimidating? Death from Puss in Boots 2 or the second sister from Jedi Fallen Order? Oh, it's got to be uh, the second sister. I love Trilla. <laughs> I, I, I've seen red eyes before. I, I mean, granted, on a, a wolf, you know, that that's a little different. But, um, yeah, I don't know. The second sister was just getting in my head, man. Like, she got me, like, questioning things and everything. I was like, wait, is this character good? Is this a, wait, what, what is the origin of that? Like, I don't know. She, she creeped me out, like, in the best way. <laughs> Power fan, thank you for that 27-month subscription. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Love the channel. Great. We love you. <laughs> Chaplin loves you. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Who are your top three least favorite characters in Bob's Burgers? 
Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not a big Gene fan. I'm sorry. I, I, I get people who like him, but I, I never got into the character much. Um, and I think of other uh, kids. Maybe maybe those girls don't always talk like this. I don't know. It just I usually think those voices are funny, but something about them in particular, I, I'm not a big fan of. Um, and uh, whoop, whoop, something. Somebody drive by there? Yep, what was that? yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Just <laughs> a loud like car. Table moving for a second. <laughs> no, just a loud car. Sorry. Can't control it. <laughs> and um, I don't know. The uh, turkey that Bob voices sometimes. I don't know. It's hard to think of another bad character. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. What movie would you like to see a sequel to that doesn't already have one? Uh, I mean, they're working on it now. I'm really excited to see an Inside Out too. Uh, I, I hope that goes over well. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of another one where it's like, oh, I wanted like, I mean, I, I guess I always wanted to see a third Tim Burton Batman just to see what would happen. I mean, I know like Walter and Rob did that great fan scription on and everything, but, uh, you know, and that feels right. But it's like, but we always wonder what would have, but what would have happened just if it really went down uh, kind of thing. I would have liked to have seen that. <laughs> Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the hundred. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Alita, Battle Angel. You can still make a sequel. God damn it, Fox, get on it. They're talking <laughs> about it. Okay, good, good. I really want to see a follow-up. Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the hundred bits. They released the full version of Part of Your World, and it's amazing. Even if the Little Mermaid remake is meh, at least she'll be incredible. That's the one thing I'm looking forward to. Because it's different, for Christ's sake, uh, is I want to hear her take on the songs because uh, just the little bit I heard uh, in the teaser, I'm like, sounds like she's got a voice. Christ, just compared to what's her name from Beauty and the Beast. It's just nice to have singers <laughs> again. Why, why are they against like having people that can sing in these movies? So yeah, that's like the one thing I'm legit looking forward to. It'll be nice to hear it on like, uh, you know, a nice theater sound too. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, people mentioned Don Bluth Month, and I mentioned that you haven't, what you haven't reviewed yet. I realized that I completely forgot about Space Ace. I know the Dragon Slayers huh. games are a special occasion, but how can you resist something where Don Bluth plays the main villain? Yeah, I just found that out. I literally just got done reading his uh, autobiography, and I found out he voiced the bad guy. I'm like, really? Huh, like, I didn't know that. Um, Maybe at some point, uh... Uh, might be a fun thing to do. There's not a, unlike Dragon Slayer, there's not as much to talk about with it because it is just sort of like throwing different lasers and, you know, yeah, mainly lasers, <laughs> honestly. But uh, there's a couple things you can talk about. I don't know, maybe like a little mini review or something like that. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Barbie trailer? It looks so cringy. Oh, I... It, if it looks cringy, it looks cringy in the best way, in my I opinion. Think it looks I, I thought amazing. it looked like a lot. I thought it looked like a lot of fun. And you know what? It, it, is Margot Robbie producing that or have a story credit or anything? I don't know. Like that. I, I was just thinking, because man, what a compliment when you're picked to play Barbie. Like uh, what everyone sees is like we have sculpted it over the years to be like, you know, perfect. Like people say you can't even achieve that perfection. And then like you're picked to play that role. That's got to be crazy. <laughs> so like what a compliment. Um, but no, her stepping out of the shoes, I thought was I thought the pink world was very funny. Um, I'm curious to see if they keep it in that world or if they bring it to the real world. Because I don't know what I want to see. I mean, I wasn't demanding a Barbie movie. <laughs> right. Uh, but I like when something, you know, I say, well, I don't really have any interest in that. And then you're like, now I can't imagine living without seeing this. I have to know what happens in this movie. I like when something gets me that excited, uh, you know, going in. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I think it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Grand Omega, thank you for the 100 bits. Surprised you didn't mention Megan singing. I was expecting at least something about that because I loved it. Uh, you know, we do a... Uh, I'm literally editing a first viewing of Megan right now that uh, I did with Rob, and uh, you'll see our reaction to it there. Uh, I think just in the review, I couldn't think of what else to say about it, but uh, yeah, you'll see a reaction there. Lou says, boo, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug and Heather. My all-time favorite movie is Evil Dead 2. And sometime last year, I just dis discovered the movie Brain Dead. One reviewer says it makes the Evil Dead look like a Sunday picnic, which I couldn't agree more. That movie is hilariously awesome, but my question for you is, would you ever review it for Nostalgia-ween? No pressure, of course. Uh, I see if... Uh, 
Yeah, how do I? I thought of Dead Alive, and that's the first thing that popped up, which is so funny. Oh, wait a minute. No. Are they like the same or something? This is really weird because both are coming up. Uh, anyway, I have not seen it. My guess is, ooh, some fun pictures, though. Uh, sorry, I'm really having fun looking at these pictures. My guess is uh, I won't review it, though, because YouTube's really strict about like what can be shown now, uh, and that includes gore and stuff like that. That looks like a pretty gory movie, so uh, probably not, even though I would love... There's so many movies I would love to review but i can't because they're gory i'd love to do like house of a thousand corpses but i can't uh so yeah there's a couple i can't talking of carl thank you for the hundred bits i saw something on my facebook feed that blew my mind since wanda's hex power prevents magic from affecting her and dr strange cast a spell that made people their universe forget peter parker as spider-man then wanda should be the only one who remembers hmm hmm never thought of it yeah interesting theory mm -hmm. yeah Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. <clears throat> Doug, it would be funny. You could record your untitled review show episodes in the studio now. The first set looks like a musty old alley, so upgrading to a dilapidated <laughs> office building would be Red Letter Media-esque really funny. <laughs> yes, but um, the actual mold that's probably in there probably isn't best either. And hearing the actual cars driving outside, even when we did the little bit for the Simpsons review, I had to re-record so many of those lines because like just any car that would drive by, you could just hear, because there's literally holes in the roof. You can hear yeah. everything outside. If a bird tweets, you can hear it. So um, yeah, it, uh, it sadly won't work. I know, guys. Thank you for the 37-month subscription. Welcome Thank back. You. Appreciate that. Would you... Uh, who would you say... Sorry. Wow. Who would you say is your favorite gumball character? Mine is Nicole Watterson, the mom. Uh... I mean, I... I think just Gumball. Uh, he's really, really likable. Uh, he's got great energy and uh, great reactions to everything. Yeah, I think it's just gotta be... One of the few shows where the main character really is the best part. Pat Disney Nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Are you going to check out the Blackberry movie? On Rotten Tomatoes, it's currently sitting at an astounding 98%. Hmm. Uh, it looked, it looked good. Um, you know, I don't know much about Blackberry. It never interested me, but the trailer did sound really interesting. It looked like it was a lot of fun. So I'll, uh, I'll try to check it out. Is it on Apple? I can't remember. I'm not sure. It's coming up, but uh, yeah, I'll try to watch it at some point. I still got to see Air, too. There's so many movies I got to see. <laughs> Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. P.S. Bluth wished Paul Shinar, uh, Alejandro Sosa from Scarface, and Jenner from Secret of Nim played the villain in Space Ace instead. Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah, but, but, but Don did a pretty good job. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I know you've said that you and the Nostalgia Critic are different people, but I'm sorry, I refuse to believe that. Not only do you both have the same opinions, but every time you play on Twitch, you make jokes and criticize the, criticize the games you are playing while being yourself. Just saying. Uh, there's much more similarity now. Uh, early on, I played them much more as like, kind of like a satire of people that take, you know, movie reviews and stuff too seriously. Uh, but then when people that did that in real life were like looking at me as like a model, I'm just like, you know, oh, maybe uh, maybe I should hear make it clear this is a character. I should tone it down a little bit. And I just found like actually just kind of giving my real thoughts, but turning them up to like 11 it was a little bit more fun. Um, so if that's kind of what I do now. They are my thoughts, but they're much louder. They're much more exaggerated uh, kind of thing. So there is a lot more similarity now than there was when we started. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Who is your favorite villain from Bob's Burgers? For me, it's Felix. It's probably the first time I've loved a character played by Zach Galifianakis. I really like, um, I don't know if you count them as villains, but that old couple, the old lady who sounds like this. Uh, that's one of those voices where you'd think I would get annoyed by it, but she really, really cracks me up. Um, I forget her name, but you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that, that couple really, really makes me laugh. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. So are we actually ever going to get a review of the Phantom Tollbooth? You really opened a can of worms with that YouTube short of yours, Doug. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it, you know, I got to watch it again because actually I got it on DVD because I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, so maybe I'll watch it again and be like, yeah, there, there is material for a review here. Or maybe like a uh, freak show cinema or something like that. So, um, yeah, we'll see. 
Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Even though on paper, Morbius and the Venom films shouldn't work, I really liked them. But the Craven movie is where I draw the line with Sony villain movies. I'm not going to the theaters to see it. What about you guys? Uh, Craven is the... Uh, the hunter. Yeah, the uh, the guy that has, like, the furry... Cat looks like Sabretooth and everything, right? Mm. Or, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll see it because I have to. Um, but who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Probably not, but Maybe. Maybe. I still haven't even seen Morbius, so no. <laughs> Grand Omega, thank you for the 100 bits. I actually thought you would use Annabelle doll against Tambot. And also, Tambot looked kind of scary. Good job. Yeah, no, that's all um, That's all Tam. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Annabelle would have been pretty good. I like using the joke of, you know, like bringing Wednesday, but everyone else has already done it. So referencing that kind of made me laugh. But uh Annabelle would have actually been a little funny. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on the character Noho Hank and Barry? Uh, I, you know, I'm, is that he's the Stephen the, Root character? He's the bald, uh... He's oh, the... oh, yeah. Oh, he's fun. Oh, my God. He is, uh, very, very funny. Um, he is one of those guys I want to look up. I think he really does have no hair, right? Like, on the eyebrows and, and the top of his head and stuff like that. I think I, so. I feel like I've seen him in interviews, and, uh, and he didn't. Uh, but, uh, I, I think I was going to look that up, and then, like, something else happened. But, uh, yeah, no, no, he, he's very, very funny. The comedic, uh, deliveries are great. Um, he can both be, like, kind of intimidating and not the least bit threatening at the same time. Uh, yeah, no, he really, really makes me laugh. Cello Antonio, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug and Heather, curious to know what made you want to start reviewing commercials? And is it a different process, a uh, writing process, and compared to reviewing movies? Um, yeah, because you have to keep in mind how long the commercial is and how much of the footage you can show. I mean, I did find out, I think, like, when I brought it back with the fourth one, um... I was hanging on the footage a little too long and showing too much of it. So, it, I mean, which is a good thing. Keep it shorter and tighter is quicker to do. But, um, uh, but yeah, we still watch them and, and laugh and, uh, you know, just think of jokes kind of on the spot, like how we do with the first viewings. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, they're, they're a lot of fun. I know, guys. Thank you for the 100 bits. Do you think you'll review the Sing movies? Uh... I've only seen the second one. I haven't seen the first. I hear the first one's not very good, uh, but the second one was okay. What I might do just for fun, I might release the test that we did for Untitled Review Show, where the lighting's off, the sound is off, and <laughs> stuff like that. But I do give my thoughts on the movie, and Sing 2 was one of them. Uh, so, yeah, we might do that, just like one video where I show like the test that we did. Uh, maybe you get more of my detailed thoughts there. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I'd ask for a clue for next week's NC review, but with all due respect, your clues are way too vague. So here's what I'll ask. Who was the director of the film you're reviewing next week? <laughs> Man, did you pick the wrong one to ask that on? Um, I don't know, and I think even if you search for it, I don't know if you could find out, because it is um, multiple directors. That that will be your clue. And I will also say it is not a movie. It is a different segment that is similar to the commercial specials. They're not commercials, but they're very, very similar. Ooh. Coburn, thank you for the 100 bits. Listening to 8 Song by Sunny Day Real Estate, the Batman Forever version, and always wondered if Batman and Robin was going to be as cool like Crow 90s movie was, but then Joel Schumacher went, nah, let's go classy and go completely Adam West on it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very clear they want to do the campy Adam West stuff, you know, which is not... I say Adam West, but there's always been campiness in Batman. Even the animated series, there's there's campiness all over the place in that, but it has more of a psychological dark lean where the Batman Forever wasn't interested in that. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I think I think he was brought in to bring them a studio movie, what the studio wanted to see in a Batman movie. He did it. He seems like a sweet guy. He doesn't cause trouble. So I, and it made money. So I, I can see why they were like, yeah, just do whatever you want for the fourth one, man. Just, just make sure we can make a lot of toys out of it. Oi, Ram. Thank you for the hundred bits. Hi, Doug. Have you thought of doing an old versus new of Scarface? P.S. What gave you the decision to incorporate hyper fangirl and devil, devil boner into those old versus new videos? Oh, they're just 
polar opposite. So I feel like the idea of having, you know, like one enjoy one thing and, you know, the other, like the other thing, you know, the older, the newer one. And one is literally a fangirl, you know, like it just kind of makes sense uh, to work them in. And uh, I've never seen the original Scarface. Uh, so maybe I should check it out. I mean, the the Pacino one's a, a gas, man. It's a ton of fun. <laughs> so uh, maybe I should see the original. I know what, guys. Thank you for the 100 bits. When you review the Mario movie, will you review it with a guest? Maybe Scott the Waz or Nerd? Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't planning to. Uh, part of it is to, I'm not saying I'm never going to do crossovers. I'm not saying that. But um, they do take more energy, and I am getting older. Uh, so we'll have to see. Um, and nothing is planned, but that doesn't mean no either. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, will you review the Tron movies? I don't care what critics say. Tron Legacy was entertaining and definitely cool looking, and the de-aging uh, de Jeff Bridges doesn't bother me like most people. It, when I first saw it, it didn't bother me. Seeing it years later, it's like, oh, it doesn't look good. Damn it. Uh, there's something about... Uh, seeing something on the big screen and the small screen that can make a huge difference. Because on the big screen, the Superman upper lip in Justice League, I, I didn't even notice it. Uh, but on the small screen, you can't, you know, escape it. It's like right in front of you and it's awful. Uh, so, but then things like, I remember effects looking worse on the big screen than the small screen, they look okay. You know, I actually thought Avatar looked better on the small screen, honestly. Uh, the, the second one looked better on the big screen. But yeah, so I, I'm kind of weird and, and different that way. Uh, with that said, I completely forgot what the question was. <laughs> what was it again? Just, uh, would you review the Tron movies? Tron movies. Um, I did Disney December of the two, and uh, I, I think I like them both. I didn't, you know, love them or anything, but uh, uh, I appreciated the look of them a great deal. Uh, they both have very unique looks that. Uh, you can tell our Tron, but they're but you can tell they're from different time periods and have new spins on them too. So uh, yeah, I like them. I like them both. Adam Grunther, thank you for the hundred bits. Who was your favorite villain from the nineteen sixty six Batman show that isn't Penguin, Joker, Riddler, and Catwoman? Uh... Oh, I think it's got to be uh, Vincent Price as a, was it Eggman? Was okay. that his name? All he does is make egg puns. It's so stupid. <laughs> but because it's Vincent Price and that amazing voice, it's like, oh, I could hear these. It's like egg SMR. I love it. <laughs> Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, what episode of Owl House are you on and what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm egg. On... Some people are saying egg head. Egg, isn't that what I said? Oh, no, Eggman. I'm thinking of Sonic. Duh. Yeah, Egghead. You are right. Literally, his head is an egg. That makes more sense. Um, I'm on the episode where uh, Ida's mother visits, and uh, I really loved it. Honestly, I kind of thought it was so good. It was like Steven Universe level with like how many layers there was uh, to it. And I really like first season. I'm liking second season even more so far, and I'm only like three or four episodes in, uh, I'm really, really enjoying I'm liking how they're working in the uh, overarching story much better in season two. They're not just kind of saving it for the end. They're really, really working it in. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I know a lot of people say, like, the second season got interrupted and went on hiatus, and then they had to speed stuff up and everything. And uh, I hope that doesn't affect it too much because, yeah, man, I, I'm really liking the way they're doing they have a good groove in the second season so far from what i've seen well ram thank you for the hundred bits what's a movie you thought was funny intentionally i mean but people don't laugh as much as you when you show them uh i think there's one movie that's kind of like a live action looney tunes cartoon even down to there's kind of a bugs bunny and a daffy duck a good guy a bad guy it's called the great race and people either love it or find it the most boring thing in the world. And it's a very long movie. Uh, I think it's something like two and a half hours or maybe even three. Like it's crazy. There's an intermission to it and everything. But uh, I took a lot of nostalgia critic from the bad guy in the movie, Jack Lemmon playing this character called uh, Professor Fate. Uh, you can hear it in the scream and the eyebrows and how nothing goes his way and everything. So uh, he, he's always jealous of the guy wearing white, which would be like the angry video game nerd kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I love that movie. There's plenty of people that love it too. It's a lot of people's favorite comedies, but the ones that don't get into it, I can't defend it. It's stupid and silly, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> 
Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. What's a movie you thought... Oh, I just read that. I'm so sorry. Grand Omega, thank you for the 100 bits. This morning, I saw a trailer for an indie game named Mouse. It's a first-person shooter with the look and feel of a Mickey Mouse rubber hose cartoon. At this point, I'm confident in saying in myself when I say, hand-drawn animation in cinema is dead. Hand-drawn <laughs> animation in video games is thriving. Woot, woot. I saw that too, and that looked really good. The one thing I don't like, and I'm sure it's not their fault, I'm sure it's just within the budget or or whatever, the backgrounds just kind of look like the original, like, um, oh, not, not Wolfenstein, what's it called? Uh, Doom? Before Doom, what's it called? Uh, was it Wolfenstein? Is that the name of it? Well, I mean, there's Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. Okay, okay. Or... Yeah, yeah, that's it. Wolfenstein 3D. For some reason, I thought I got the wrong name. Uh, yeah, it looks very Wolfenstein. And I'm thinking, like, man, for hand drawn, I feel like the backgrounds could be better for that. But at the same time, that that has to be a budget issue. I can't see them being like, yes, and the backgrounds are done. They look great. That's exactly what we imagined, uh, kind of thing. But uh yeah, I did see the trailer for that. That looks uh that looks like a lot of fun. And I agree. I think seeing the hand drawn in there is going another place to check out good hand drawn, uh YouTube right mm -hmm. now. Uh with like uh uh Hell of a Boss and uh Lackadaisy and I mean there's all sorts of great hand drawn animation on uh YouTube. Hopefully that'll extend back to uh cinema again when they see like that crowd is there. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, will you review the 2010 Wolfman movie starring Benicio Del Toro? In my opinion, it's the ideal modern werewolf movie, and clearly the director took inspiration from the original classic. Yeah, man, I wanted to love that movie. Um, I, I can't remember if I straight up, if I enjoyed it or not. Um, I remember liking a lot of it. I can't remember if I said the whole thing worked. Um, I don't know if I'll do a review of it because I don't know if there's enough to really get like material out of it. I feel like I would mostly just, I could do like maybe like a short review, you know, kind of like when James does his Monster Madness uh, videos, like I could probably do something like that. I don't know if I could do a whole review, like a whole NC review on it. Selmara, thank you for the hundred bits. Which is funnier, the Pennywise meme me or Megan meme me? <laughs> right as you said that, I got the Pennywise meme me that popped up. That's cool. Um, which is, I mean, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> You're the audience member. I'm the one that made it. I'm going to be biased and say they're both genius. So you tell me, <laughs> which is better. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Always wondered, how did your family react when they found out that you were doing Nostalgia Critic? Also, why is it 50 bits in the gameplay vids, but not here? Um, because here we're focusing on answering questions, and we were finding that at 50, we were just getting a ton of questions and couldn't answer any nicely. So we thought maybe upping it to 100 would give us time to actually discuss questions. <laughs> yeah, we had to like do like one word answers after a while. So yeah, we had to up it. Um, and uh, how the family ran. Uh, I mean, my dad loved it. He loved that I was getting into, I was doing something that was tied into entertainment and comedy and laughter and, and criticism and Phil, I mean, all the things he really likes too. Um, my mom was proud I was making people happy, but just didn't like that I used the F word all the time and stuff like that. So uh, what I would do is that I would take all the emails of somebody saying like, I helped them get through, I don't know, like a, a depression or an outstation in Afghanistan or something like that. Like the emails I really did not expect uh, is saying that, you know, watching the stuff helped bring some normalcy and consistency uh, to their lives. And I'd always, and I give it to her every year and I put it in a little, you know, a uh, book and I'd always call it, uh, they all like the F word <laughs> was what I always called it. Uh, so, uh, she did learn to like it. Uh, what a shame. She didn't live to see, uh, YouTube changing the rules and pretty much saying you can't say the F word now. She would have been very happy about that. <laughs> Grand Omega, thank you for the 100 bits. So one of the characters for Transformers Rise of the Beast named Wheeljack has a horrendous design. Looks like Donnie from Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. Uh, Wheeljack Transformers. Let's see. Uh, I mean... Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, he looks pretty bad. <laughs> it doesn't look that great. Strider for Life, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you remember the television series Kung Fu, The Legend Continues? I've just started re-watching it. Uh, like, hold on, The Legend Continues. I want to be sure I'm getting the right one here. Uh, okay, okay, David Carradine, yeah. Um, 
Because I was like, I know Kung Fu, but I didn't remember the subtitle. The legend continues. I've only seen a little bit. I, I didn't grow up with it. I know some of the cliches, like the whatever, take the pebble or the cricket from my hand and stuff. A young grasshopper and stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't know too much else about it. Uh, yeah, so that's sadly one that I missed. <laughs> Web Fox, thank you for the 100 bits. Hello, Doug and Heather. Could there be a review or editorial on the Pacific Rim or Godzilla MonsterVerse movies? They turned 10 and 9 this year. Man, that's crazy to think. Uh, I saw the first Pacific Rim and I liked it. I never did see the second one. Uh, we talked about maybe like one of these theme months doing the newer Godzilla Kong movies. Uh, I think that'd be interesting. The only thing about that is I'm a big King Kong fan. Uh, and I like Godzilla, but I'm not like a diehard fan. And I know people that are, are really diehard. So there is a part of me that's afraid to talk about them because if I miss like an in-joke or like a trope that's like a really famous part of the movies, I feel like I'm going to really let down some fans. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm on the fence about it, but I do have thoughts about, you know, the movies and I do like them. Uh, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see. It's on the list as a possibility. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Who was the worst Batman villain? Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face or Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy? Man, I don't know. Because both of them I've learned to really enjoy just for how bad they I shouldn't say that. How campy they are. I think they're both going for the campiness. Um, they're both very funny in that respect. Um Maybe Uma Thurman, just because they're doing the uh, the Enigma thing again. Okay. At least Tommy Lee Jones had kind of an original backstory with the Two Face thing, but her, she's literally a geeky scientist, and you know, I'm gonna turn you in, blah blah. And then she gets some sort of experiment that turns her crazy and everything. You know, it's just Enigma all over again. But uh, yeah, honestly, we had to watch Batman Robin at a con uh, last year and riff it and stuff like that. It really is it was one. Fun. If, you, if you just take like five minutes. If you watch five minutes at a time, it's a hoot. Anything after that, it's like, okay, this is really getting dull. But man, any five minutes is very, very funny. I know what, guys. Thank you for the 100 bits. Will you do an untitled review show of Fast 10, Fast X? <laughs> um, Probably not, because I haven't seen the majority of the movies. I've seen the first one. I've seen, like, two of the middle ones when they turned into heist movies. I had a good time. I really enjoyed them. Uh, but I'm just way too far behind. Uh, I, I haven't even seen the one where they go into space, and I feel like that's probably an important one to see in order to take in the campiness of it. Uh, so, yeah, probably not. I, I like put it this way. If I'm going to do it on top, I'm going to do it on, like, John Wick 4 or Creed 3 or something like that. I'm not going to waste it on Fast <laughs> Thiff guy, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm not in the mood to ask questions this week. Sorry, but keep my cheer. You guys deserve it. I thank you. Okay. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, have you gotten a chance to finish watching the Anastasia musical? And if so, what are your thoughts? I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm in the last third. I haven't finished it up yet. Uh, I am liking it. It's... I do see why they put Rasputin in there. <laughs> Though I do like the villain they have. Uh, but the idea of this being like, oh, no, kids are supposed to watch this, too, and enjoy it. I'm like, I don't know if they would, man. Uh, I think they'd be pretty bored by it. I can see why Rasputin was put in the animated film. Um, I love the songs. I don't know about the one I'm watching. The acting is a little off. It's a, Ironically, it's a little too cartoony. Huh. Um, but uh, and I know there is a way to act on a stage. I mean, everything is bigger and you have to hit the people in the back rows and they can, you know, get the emotion to and everything. But this is really big and really over the top. Um, so but when a song starts, it's really good. So I, I am liking it. That That's the one criticism I have of, again, of, of a YouTube copy I'm seeing. So I don't even know if it's like the original uh, cast or anything like that. But, uh, but I'm enjoying it. Rand C Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. I was wondering if you do an NC review of a childhood favorite movie of mine called The Great Outdoors. It stars Dan Aykroyd and Chet Ripley. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing that. Um, it's one of those I only saw it for the first time all the way through. Like last year, it's another one of those I always saw clips of, but I never saw it like in order, like the full movie. Uh, so I did like it. I mean, it's what. There's not a ton you can say about it, so which is kind of here's a little 
comedy with some funny people in it, and then it just kind of disappears. Like, I don't think I could really add a whole lot to it. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, Doug, may we have a hint for a clue for next week's review slash special slash editorial? Uh, man, I it just, I feel like I kind of said with the commercial thing, it's like the commercials, uh, but not quite. Um, I'll say it's something you see in between commercials. Uh, mm. So hopefully that's a bigger clue. <laughs> Interesting. Power Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. Well, Doug, now that you're in season two of Owl House, I have to ask, what are your thoughts on Hootie? Oh, I, I like him. I'm always thinking he's going to go one step too far and become annoying, but he doesn't, which is impressive with that voice. Uh, and I actually like he's becoming more and more of a main character uh, and the jokes with him usually work. So uh, yeah, no, I like him. Uh, Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Which 80s movie villain played by Robert Davey do you like the most? Uh, Jake Fratelli in The Goonies, Special Agent Johnson in Die Hard, or Sanchez in License to Kill? Oh, License to Kill. Uh, yeah, I have a soft spot for the uh, Dalton Bond movies. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on the character Tiny Nose in The Owl House? I've only seen a little bit of him. Uh, he always looks like an Oni Plays cartoon to me, um, which I don't think that's intentional, but uh, that's always what I think of when I see him. Uh, I don't know, the little bit I saw of him is fine. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. We've had a TV series about Psycho and Norman Bates with Bates Motel, but what if they made a TV series out of Alex DeLarge and A Clockwork Orange? Do you think that would even be enough material for one season? Uh... <laughs> could you show on TV with that character? I mean, good God. Uh, I don't know. Well, so much of why that movie works is what happens to him. Uh, you know, like, like the, the story that he goes through. I think if you just follow him and what he does, I, I don't know if that would work. You just, you just have to do the movie. You'd have to do the story. Uh, whereas something like Norman Bates, like, Yes, there's a movie there, there's a story, but just seeing how he got to that point would be interesting. I, I don't know. I always thought the idea of Clockwork Orange was just, this is just, like, he's just a bad C. Like, something just was off about him. It just somehow created this. Or maybe the world itself made allowed this guy to exist. I don't know. I like that it wasn't really explained. Where I feel like with uh, Norman Bates, you could dive more into, what well, was that connection with his mother? Well, how did it get to this point uh so um i mean even though it's one of my favorite movies of all time i don't know if a show would work i, I could be wrong though Rand c gaming thank you for the hundred bits so doug i just found uh something out the live action super mario bros movie was made by disney's hollywood pictures so when will we see that disney semper uh this year <laughs> fantastic Spo spoiler that's the edition we're doing we are doing the hollywood pictures movies FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Heather, I first read the book A Wrinkle in Time in sixth grade. Have you taught or read that book? Thoughts on it and the Oprah movie. Um, I love Wrinkle in Time. I never traditionally taught it like I did for like The Giver and Tuck Everlasting, um, but I used to recommend it to a lot of kids who were interested in like sci-fi fantasy type stuff. I never saw the Oprah movie. Oh my God, you had to see the Oprah movie. I never saw it. <laughs> we, we uh, Tamara and Malcolm it came with us and we didn't know if it was bad or good or whatever. And we were just watching like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like the Oprah scenes, especially they are the most oh, Oprah no. thing you've ever seen. That's it's why like, I just, don't want to see it. Time, she just comes in. She's like, this is my movie now. <laughs> she oh. literally turns into this giant and like the big awe inspiring scene is they get to fly around her and go, wow. And one kid's like, May I touch your cheek? And she's like, yes. Oh, that is so terrible. It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's, it's, I'm sure, because I hear the book's fantastic. It's not the book at all. <laughs> but, uh, oh man, you gotta see, you gotta watch. I just, and if you ever do, just invite me along to see, because I gotta okay. see. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. One underrated Disney movie I highly recommend you review for Disney December is Heavyweights. Ben Stiller is very funny in it. Uh, I've never seen it, and I had a hard time finding a uh, hard copy. I, there probably is now, the more I think about it. But for a while, there wasn't like a DVD release or anything. So, um, yeah, I, I'm a little curious. The one clip I saw 
that I thought was very funny because I know the idea it's like a fat camp and they're going to, uh, you know, it's very laid back. But then Ben Stiller is like the guy who's going to you know, make them thinner, make them blah, blah, blah. And they were taking the before pictures and they tried to have the background be like very dark and depressing. It's like, no, no, sadder, sadder, you're fat, you're fat. <laughs> I thought that was very funny because that's always how they do those. Like the before picture, they're always, mm, and it's bad lighting and everything. Yeah. And then the after bit, they're always gorgeous. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, did you know Hayao Miyazaki hates Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones? He essentially even considers the former war propaganda. Also, are you going to check out his <laughs> supposed last movie, How Do You Live? Uh, I mean, do I even have a choice in seeing the last movie? I have to see Miyazaki's next last movie because every right. last movie is his last movie um but uh i mean i i like them <laughs> i love indiana jones and uh lord of the rings uh i definitely have issues with them but um yeah no i, I still really enjoy them but he's entitled to his opinion that disney nerd thank you for the hundred <coughs> bits do you think we'll get one last appearance from any of the heroes in the dceu in the flash uh, at least Batman, uh, uh, right. Ben Affleck. What I'm curious about, I just thought of this today, and I'm like, man, wouldn't that be interesting? Do you think they're going to do a tie-in with the Flash going back in time to Ben Affleck saying, Lois well, Lane is the key kind of thing? Do you <laughs> think they're going to tie that? Because that, like, to me, that is the most embarrassing left-out moment in all of the DCEU. If they don't tie that in somehow... As, like where there's literally different worlds and dimensions and stuff. It's like, oh, would you really not do that? Would you not take that opportunity? Um, so that's the biggest question mark to me. It's like, are they going to be smart enough to figure out a way to work that in? Or is it just like, nope, it's just a write-off. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the, on the Divergent movie and books? Never saw them, never read them. Yeah, sorry. I liked the first book. The second book was pretty good. The third book, hate. I shouldn't say hated it, but I it did not live up to the expectations that I had from the first two. Um, and I only saw the first movie, and it was fine. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I know you're not doing any more career dives, but I'm actually surprised you never did one on Catherine Zeta-Jones, since she's your favorite. <laughs> um, I mean, I only did three. <laughs> so maybe that would have been an interesting... Uh, one, I mean, because I did, you know, obviously like the actress very much. I did pay attention to what movies she would do and stuff like that. And I was always like, oh, don't do the Julia Roberts thing. Come on, do more interesting stuff. And uh, she kind of found that interesting middle ground of uh, sort of doing the traditional, you know, just pretty woman-ish things and uh, doing something that's a little bit more interesting. Uh, kind of went back and forth. So, yeah, I don't know. And it's cool to see her like doing Morticia and uh, other stuff now. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Coming from mm. someone who's only played a handful of uh, Mario games um, I and isn't very knowledge knowledgeable, sorry, about the lore, um, I thought the movie wasn't very good. Or, yeah, no, wasn't. Wasn't very good. Good animation and voice cast, but a lot of it was cringy. I had a blast I mean, with it. Oh, yeah, but you know Mario. That's it. We know Mario. We grew yeah, up I guess with Mario. so. I mean, they're saying they didn't grow up with it. And that's what I said in the review. I said, look, if you did not grow up with these characters or games and everything, uh, it, this isn't going to be your thing. It's not a self-sufficient movie. So, no, I I completely understand. I, I think it's one of the reasons it didn't get that many great critical reviews is because I'm sure some people remember Mario, but they weren't like necessarily raised on it you know what yeah. i mean so um yeah we're, i mean we were we were upset lots of people are obsessed with mario but uh yeah i think that's not surprising to me at all <laughs> oi ram thank you for the hundred bits during chipmunks 2 and garfield 2 you wonder why those kids movies reference silence of the lambs anime animaniacs on the other hand references and parodies lots of adult media and kids watch that show is there a difference oh yeah animaniacs is legit written for adults too uh, it has adult humor and adult jokes and, uh, you know, but a great sense of uh, timing and pacing that makes it where even if a kid doesn't get the joke, they just like the fun way it's done, where I feel like that's not done in the Garfield and Chipmunk uh, movies. These are clearly just for little, little kids. So it's like, why throw in the adult references? You know what I mean? Especially yeah. if you're not going to do anything that clever with it. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Also, without spoilers, the Super Mario Bros. movie had the multi multiple endings problem where it could have had ended a few times but continued on. 
Um, I half agree. There was a point where I kind of thought it was wrapping up, and then they kind of threw in one more ending. I was like, oh, I was not expecting this. But again, if you know the games, it's pretty cool to see him like get the star and be invincible and, and so forth. So again, from so if you're someone that has not grown up with these games, it, I entirely get it. You're totally founded on that opinion. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on Tropic Thunder? Oh, I love it. Uh, and it's a movie where I really thought I was only going to enjoy the first third, like the satire of Hollywood. Uh, so I was really impressed when they got in the jungle, and it was still funny. It was still entertaining. I wanted to know what was going <laughs> to happen to them and all the various uh, weird twists and turns and everything. Uh, yeah, I love that movie. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Seth Rogen TMNT trailer? Oh, I thought it looked good. I like that style is becoming more popular. I have a little bit of a fear it's going to be too popular. Uh, uh, yeah. Where too many people like are going to kind of abuse it. But as of now, it's a unique style. It looks good. It's fun to look at. It's fun to look at, you know, like how much of the 3D is under the brush strokes there and how much of the brush strokes brush strokes was something that was made with a tablet how much is replicated how much is 2d and 3d i i think it looks good i like the shadow work on it and everything i like too that they really legit look and sound like teens that's something i feel like they rarely capture mm. in the movies or yeah. not, not even movies it's just all of it honestly uh so I, I like they really do incorporate that into it so i don't know it, it looks good to me we are going to have to pick it up a little bit. Pick We're up. still gotcha. an hour behind. Gotcha. Uh, FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Ever seen the 2007 movie Joshua? No. Uh, I've been ringing the bell. I'll try to check it out. Rand C Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. <clears throat> Doug, I love the new running joke that was started in the Pirates reviews, that being in internet time. <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't... I feel like I've done that joke for a while, but I've been using it a lot more. Um, so, yeah, you'll probably see more of it. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Idea for an NC editorial. Why do twist endings often not work? Uh, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of times where they do work. They did use them way too many times uh, after Six Sense because that was like the new gimmick. So that would be kind of interesting to talk about. Maybe just movie gimmick fads would be interesting. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Nostalgia for Dr. Sleep. Maybe. We'll see. It might not be a bad idea, actually. Yeah, it's Stephen King. Might be good. Grand Omega, thank you for the 100 bits. Can you do a Disney Sember on the Disney game show, The Quest? I don't even think I heard of that one. Uh, I'll try to look into it. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Missed opportunity <clears throat> for a joke in your Despicable Me series review. In three, two, one, Scarlet Overkill from Minions has an eerily similar look to Linda Belcher. All that's missing is Chris Pratt doing her voice. <laughs> ah, I can see that, yeah. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen The Wolf House 2018? And if so, what are your thoughts? Wolf House? Let me see. Hold on. Wolf House 2018. Mm -hmm. It's not ringing the bell. Uh, uh, oh, I have heard of this. I have not seen it. I really want to. Actually, thank you for reminding me about that because I really, really want to check that out. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. How would you rank every Despicable Me and Minions movie? Uh, Despicable Me 1, actually. 2, uh, 3, Minions 2, the Minions 1. <laughs> Author, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug and Heather, sorry I'm late. Was chatting with an old friend. How y'all doing? And could we please get a hint for next week's NC? They were late, so they didn't know that this has been answered already. It's cool. Um, it's like the commercial special, but not quite. And we're doing good. <laughs> Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I always got the impression the most important thing about movies are stories and characters, but apparently Treasure Planet style is too distracting for you that story and characters apparently don't matter in this case. It's that what your review is going to be. Just you going, would have been better if the style was different over and over and over. <laughs> no, uh, because the style also is a fact. Okay, you've heard style over substance before right. uh you know it, it can kind of work the other way too where something can be lacking in his style or environment and stuff like that and i didn't hate that movie honestly i should see it again i wonder if i would like it now maybe the style wouldn't bother me uh so i might do an nc on it someday orlando garcia thank you for the 100 bits doug how would you react if the simpsons did a parody of the eyes of my mother for next treehouse of horror uh 
man, what, ooh, just thinking of that movie makes me ugh, uncomfortable. It's a really good movie, but ugh. Um, I don't think there'd be the uh, audience there. I don't think many people know what that movie is. <laughs> Kenton plays stuff. Thank you for the hundred bits. Hi, Doug and Heather. Since it was briefly mentioned in the Megan review, will we possibly see a review of Peter Pan live in the future? I actually like it, but even I have to admit it has its flaws. Even Christopher Walken was a bit underwhelming. How can Christopher Walken put in a bland performance that isn't fun? I don't know. He made us, uh, we still quoted in a lagoon. Yeah, no, we still quote it. Uh, maybe at some point. That is one of those that gets copyright hit a lot, those live performances, but it is fun to talk about. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Are there any MCU movies that you think deserve to be considered all-time movie classics along the lines of Empire Strikes Back and The Godfather? Uh, probably a couple. I, I mean, does No Way Home count? I, I think it kind of does. Um, I really like Civil War. I like Infinity War. Endgame I would throw on there, too, honestly, even though I have some issues with it. What it does right, I think it really does great. Guardians 2, I think, is fantastic. Uh, yeah, there's some. Cameron Blythe, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, do you think you would play South Park the Stick of Truth? I think you would enjoy it, even if you're not into turn-based RPGs. I am curious in playing it. When I saw the Ralph Bakshi animation, the opening of that, I said, oh my god, I want to play this. I really do. So maybe we will at some point. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on Bodies, Bodies, Bodies 2022? I would have liked it more if it was shot better. It was a very ugly, not fun movie to look at. Everything was in shadow and it didn't look good. But the idea is great. And it has a great twist at the end that is just, it really is an ending that just saves the entire movie. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. Many months ago, I recommended the Simpsons episode Holidays of Future Past and A Serious Flanders. Just checking to see if you've had the chance to watch either of them yet. Not yet. I do have them written down, uh, but I have not had a chance to check them out. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Which Inquisitor from Star Wars Rebels do you like more? Jason Isaacs as the Grand Inquisitor in Season 1, or Sarah Michelle Gellar as the Seventh Sister in sec in Season 2? Was it uh, in Season 2? Isn't she teamed up with someone, too? Or no, am I getting that backwards? I honestly don't remember. I, I thought there was two of them. I liked when there was two of them. Uh, I, I liked the bad guy okay in season one but something about there being two i thought was kind of cool so, so i guess i'll say that the season two ones kenton plays stuff thank you for the hundred bits can i just say i loved malcolm's performance in today's review his over the top and whiny performance in the whole thing got some good laughs out of me i can only imagine how fun things were behind the scenes it was and he always says his favorite part to play is the channel awesome version of him yeah because <laughs> we always kind of write him as a doofus uh yeah and it's true and he's fun to write for Thank you, Adam Gunther. She's teamed up with the fifth brother. Yes, you are correct. Okay, yeah, I, I like the duo uh, in season two. Hayabusa, thank you for the hundred bits. Thoughts on Carl Urban possibly being Johnny Cage in the new Mortal Kombat 2 movie. The Miz would have been great personally, lol. Uh, I, he wouldn't be my first pick, but then again, like, oh, has he turned out a bad performance yet? Like, he's played every geek icon. He's played it great. So, um, yeah, I feel like it has to be good. Kenton plays stuff. Thank you for the hundred bits. Usually we ask you what the next review is, but if you're still working on them, can we get a hint for the next Dark Tunes video? Uh, I got a list. I people seem to like the editorial videos I'm doing in my office right now, so I'm focusing on that. I want to wait till like I, I kind of miss Dark Tunes again to do it again. You know what I mean? To get the passion yeah. in there. So I do have a list though of uh, ideas. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, Doug, will you and Rob at least watch the first episode of Black Lagoon whenever you guys meet up again? The English language version is really great. Check it out once you guys meet up next time. Uh, we're getting through Schmigadoon right now <laughs> uh, whenever we meet up. How is it? Uh, oh, oh, I love it. Absolutely. Oh, oh my God. What? Uh, Cecil Strong? Oh, what the fuck's her name? Uh, from SNL. She just left SNL, but I was talking about it because everyone made like a big emotional thing about it. I was like... I don't even remember who this actress is. I feel so bad, but she's one of the stars in this. And man, just looking at her looks the whole time, her reactions is pure gold. I'm like, holy shit. Now I want to go back to these SNL episodes and watch her reactions to everything because they really are great. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Question for you both. If you could learn to perform any magic trick at all, which one would you like to learn and why? Oh. Uh hmm. I mean, I'm one of those people, just just the sleight of hand, I'm impressed by making a card disappear and up the sleeve. I mean, it's so simple, but just the speed they do it and the preciseness you have to do to really make somebody go 
whoa, like that just vanished. Like that, I know it's so simple, but that fascinates me. There's no mechanics. It's just good timing and speed. I, it's very, very simple, but I'm still very impressed by it. Some of the like mind reading ones, because there's, I don't mm. even know how to put it. In modern magic, there's certain tricks where like people use whiteboards or whatever to like say exactly what people are thinking. And uh, there's really interesting psychology behind how a magician can manipulate someone into saying what they want them to. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. So I'd be very interested to, to hear some of that. Uh, the, uh, the amazing Randy, I think he shows us some of those uh, are done. He kind of debunks psychics and stuff like that. He does show a few tricks and they're pretty interesting. CJ Noel Lopez. Thank you for the hundred bits. Hey Doug, are we still getting an NC review of the OG little mermaid this month? Oh, yeah. Uh, we literally had, uh, I could just say it. We had Philo in. Philo Barnhart uh, was just in. We shot with him. Um, you know what? I could show this. What the hell? This is fun. Ooh, uh, we, we had him do we're getting drawings. a treat. Yeah, we had him do drawings of us in the reviews. And Tamara hasn't taken this home yet because she didn't have something to take it home with. But uh, he literally drew her as a princess. Look at that. So there's uh, Tam White for you there. So, Aww. yeah. And, and he did quite a few drawings. I won't ruin the others. But, uh, yeah, it's... Um, Tamara was just a cloud nine, man. She was like, a Disney animator fucking drew me as a princess. Holy shit. <laughs> Oi, Ram, thank you for the hundred bits. Hey, Doug, just thought about Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. Just title the video Ren and Stimpy 2003 or Ren and Stimpy Spike TV version as the title of the video that should get things around. Get around is Spike, things. Is Spike TV even still around with people? No. Uh, maybe I could put like Ren and Stimpy reboot or something like that. We'll see. Um, yeah, because I would like to talk about it. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. I was wondering, after it was mentioned last week, have you seen Fox Studios' The Princess yet? And if you haven't, what? or sorry, and if you have, what are your thoughts? Not yet. Um, it's going to be a while because, um, yeah, I'm still catching up on a bunch of our stuff to watch. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Is there one particular episode of Bob's Burgers that stood out to you par as particularly annoying? For me, it's the episode where Linda forces Bob to help her... Uh, sorry, to help with her mother at the airpoint. The lesson at the end really frustrated me. Still love the show, though. Um, yeah, just really any Gene episode. Any Gene episode where he has to perform, especially, <laughs> always gets on our nerves. Any, any, I'm watching it with my wife, and any time where we see it's a Gene episode, we're like, oh, no. <laughs> it's just not our favorite. That's a Zener, and thank you for the 100 bits. I just read this, and I have to tell you, Will Poulter had to clarify to a fan that he was not Sid from Toy Story to a fan in L.A. in the bathroom. How bizarre. Um, hmm. Interesting theory, though. I did not know that was a theory. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 <clears throat> bits. Thoughts on the movie Hot Tub Time Machine? I never saw it. I heard it's fun, though. Uh, that's one that somehow uh, missed me. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen Road to Perdition to Perdition 2002? And if so, what are your thoughts? Uh-oh. He's really thinking about it for a long time. There he oh. is. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <gasps> Guys, is that going to be a thing to both the plug now? Oh, shit. Maybe I got to plug more. I don't know. We'll see. Um. Anyway, uh, I was saying... Um, I watched the first third. I didn't get into it. I should watch the whole thing, though. Uh, I should give it a chance. Kenton plays stuff. Thank you for the 100 bits. Um, wait, sorry. Were you talking about Road to Perdition? Yes. Or, okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that was still not Hot Tub Time Machine. Um, <laughs> Kenton plays stuff. Thank you for the 100 bits. Who would you say is your favorite silly villain in any series or movies? I'll always have a soft spot for Mojo Jojo from the OG Powerpuff Girls. And as much as you find them annoying, Scratch and Grounder from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, fair enough. Um, you know, I mentioned him earlier. I think uh, Professor Fate from The Great Race. It's a movie not many people know about, but I took a lot of inspiration from Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. At what point did you realize you could probably make a living as the critic? Uh, as soon as I started getting paychecks. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people always say, what's the point when you realize you made it? It's like, we well, start getting paid for it, honestly. Uh, but seeing people dress up like you and everything is also very, very cool. <laughs> That's always, like, amazing to see it for the first time. I love her. Thank you for the hundred bits. Hello, Doug. Two quick questions. Do you have any idea when or what the next programming block review will be? Also, given how much you talk about them, would like to see a Tom and Jerry and Scooby-Doo crossover? Oh, huh. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, they're all by the same people. I could see that. And uh, yeah, we're literally talking about the next one right now. I just sent out an email making sure people can uh, contribute to it and everything. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, it's coming up. 
Strider for life, thank you for the 100 bits. Since the new Flash movie taps into the multiverse, it would have been amusing if they added a guy playing Adam West Batman along with another guy being Burt Ward's Robin. Yeah, but who would play him? I don't know who you... He made that so iconic. I don't know who you would get. That would be satisfying for that. But yeah, uh, yeah I'm not entirely against it, but I don't know who you would get. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. I was wondering if you've seen the PS2 Ratchet and Clank weapons commercials, and if you have, what are your thoughts on them? Maybe years ago. I'd have to look them up again. It's kind of ringing a bell, but I'd have to watch them again. PSNBD, thank you for the 100 bits. Why haven't we seen a Nostalgia Critic episode about the movie Evolution, the one starring Orlando Jones? I never saw it because everyone said it was just so bad. Um... And uh, people have recommended it. I don't know if it has enough of a following that people would click on it. And I don't have that much passion to talk about. But then again, maybe I should at the very least watch it. CJ Noel Lopez, thank you for the 100 bits. Did you see the trailer for the new Tiny Toons Luniversity show? What are your thoughts on them changing Buster and Babs for sometimes platonic friends, sometimes boyfriend, girlfriend in the original to siblings in the new reboot? Uh, I think t Tom Ruger said it best. He just said, ew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't sum it up better just ew <laughs> that's like making Lois Lane and Clark Kent brother and sister like what the hell's wrong with you uh, I, I do not see that at all but um, uh, the preview looked fine uh, you know I'm more of an Animaniacs guy than Tiny Toons but I did like Tiny Toons I got my DVD and everything so I'll check it out I'm not like crazy excited but uh, you know I'm curious enough CJ Noel Lopez, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you have any interest in seeing Christopher Nolan's new movie, Oppenheimer? I'm very intrigued in seeing it. Yeah, the more, the last trailer I saw got me pretty excited. Uh, sort of the commentary they're doing, that seems kind of obvious, but I thought the spin they put on it was pretty interesting about like, yeah, this is going to sort of be what changes the world a little bit in many respects. And I love the line of, uh, you know, Man, it finally getting to the point where it's like we create something that can destroy the world. And he says, there's almost a 0% chance that'll happen. He goes, almost a 0%? And he says, well, in theory, what do you expect? He says, I expect zero. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. I just saw an article that AMC Theaters is going to launch its own brand of candy at their concession stands. Thoughts? Honestly, I've liked some of their other food, I actually like their hot dogs. Okay. Uh, you know, the popcorn's decent. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm open to that. It's probably just going to be overpriced, relabeled. Like, the, the same factory that sells M&M's is probably going to give them their candy-coated chocolates as well. Oh, okay. If they took away M&M's and replaced it with that, yeah, that I wouldn't be for. But they still have M&M's there. I can't see them doing that. I think that people will catch on too quickly. Uh, I feel like they'd have to do something different. But, but I could be wrong. You could be right. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. The first season of Owl House, Disney had a strong hold on it and forced the crew to add the school from what I've been told. And season two was much more of what the creator had planned. Uh, yeah, I, I can see that. And, and I still like season one. Season one's one of the few where they didn't do the epic story at the beginning. And I was okay with that because a lot of shows did that where it's like, here's an epic story, but we got to keep them in this one location for some reason. That was one of the few where I, I thought that was actually all right. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm already digging season two uh, quite a bit. It, it, going off of a season I already liked. Devox, thank you for that 36 month subscription. That is three heckin' years. Thank, thank you. Thank you appreciate so that. much. With Dune 2 coming out soon, do you think Dune will be the next great sci-fi franchise? Well, so I know they want to go to, what, Doom Messiah, I think. Uh, I want them to go up to Children of Doom. Okay? That's where mm. I think that's the last great story, in my opinion, uh, in that series. But um, uh, I don't know. A lot of it, I think, is dependent on how they do the main character in the second movie. Because uh, I, I buy him as a little under-assuming kid you know his little prince whatever but he's gonna be like the leader the chosen one and stuff i'm like i'm not seeing that yet but maybe that's a good thing maybe this movie will show like oh wow like how he'll win us over and everything lou says boo thank you for the hundred bits sorry for the confusion earlier about the movie brain dead but you're right it's the same as dead alive i can't oh. get over the fact that it's directed by peter jackson also youtube not allowing it is an mm -hmm. absolute bummer I agree. Um, okay, so it is interesting. It's the same movie. I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. 
Uh, and yeah, the gore is pretty fantastic. Uh, and, and the camp is pretty fun with it too. But I have to sit down and watch the whole thing. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Imagine a parody of No Country for Old Men where nobody takes Anton seriously. Like, Anton still maintains his demeanor, but people just couldn't give less of a shit about his monologues. Uh, people do things like put out cigarettes on his head, open mouth, sneeze on him, even hit him with a truck. I'd watch it. I feel like that's been done somewhere before where a guy it kills people, but he can't be taken seriously. And, but done like in a legit suspenseful way too. And I can't think of where I saw it, but I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like that trope. <laughs> Author S.W. Eon, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, finally got Pinnacle Studio so I can actually start my editorial and was wondering if I could use a clip from one of your videos as a part of a topic. I bring up in said editorial. Obviously, I'd credit it to you, but I wanted to check and make sure you were okay with it first. Yeah, as long as it's, you know, transformative, you know, like fair use, following the law and stuff like that. Like, but we're usually fine with that. Yeah, just don't upload the whole thing and be like, oh, I made this, thir you know, kind of thing. Like, you know, comment on it or do something with it. Adam Gunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen the most recent episode of Hell of a Boss yet? If so, what do you think? Just to clarify, it's the one that came out in March. A newer episode hasn't been released just yet. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, the one question I have is, how can you die if you're in hell? I don't know why it took me this long to think about it, but I'm like, <laughs> wait, how does this work? Because <laughs> death is becoming more and more of like a thing that can happen in this world. I'm like, but they're in hell. <laughs> so what's after hell? Uh, maybe an episode on that would be really interesting. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. There's this rough sketch demo for a canceled Medusa animated film done by modern animation legend James Baxter. Have you guys seen it before? It's gotten lots of traction on Twitter. I just saw it literally today. That's so funny you brought that oh, nice. up. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's weird because it looks like... Cat looks like she's the heroine. You know, like, Cat looks like a young adult book where it's like she's got the little bow and arrow and the snakes are all kind of quirky and everything that that's not usually what i think of when i think of medusa uh but it was well animated it, it looked kind of neat but um it's just i'd have to see what they do with the story of it but yeah it's beautifully animated Ran C Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I need to bring this movie to your attention. It is called The Boogeyman. It is a Disney slash Fox supernatural horror film based off a Stephen King short story. It was originally streaming only, but was good. Uh, sorry, was so good. It is getting a theatrical release instead. Hope you see it. Oh, I don't know. It was streaming originally. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, just, I guess they did the same thing with the new uh, Evil Dead movies. That's, that's a pretty cool compliment when it's made for streaming and they're like, no, this is good enough. Let's put extra money into this to get on the big screen. I think that's pretty cool. Um, with that said, I didn't get too into the new evil dead. Cause it did feel like a streaming movie to me and a little bit more low budget. So I'm hoping that's not the case for this one, but I don't know. There is a part of me that still kind of roots it on even that new evil dead. I'm still, I didn't like it, but I'm kind of rooting for it. Cause it's like, that's just really cool. When people are like, this is better than what we thought. Let's try to put more money behind it. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Tuck Everlasting movie? Did I see that one? I don't think I did. I, I don't think I saw it. Uh, so It's pretty I, uh, good. It's not the best adaptation of the book, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I never saw this. Uh, and I was curious to check it out. Maybe I'll work that into the next uh, Disney December. Yeah, because I, I totally forgot that was a thing. Ran C Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. If Heather does ever see the Oprah movie, can that be a first viewing video? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we'd have to film that if you ever did. I'd love to see your reaction. Because I know they're not even like centaurs in it, because Oprah would never be a centaur. <laughs> oh my God. No. Oh, oh God. yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Alex Loves Musicals, thank you for the 100 bits. This is part one of two. You're probably watching the original cast. There are versions, this is Anastasia. There are versions of the Broadway and off-Broadway tryouts. All the performers are fantastic, in my opinion. So happy to hear that you're enjoying it. Awesome. Uh, Alex Loves Musicals, thank you for the 100 bits. This is part two of two. I don't think this version was meant for little kids. Love the new songs. The opening prologue slash dance before Rumor in St. Petersburg was breathtaking. I prefer Anya's intro song, Here Stay, I Pray You. The song where they're leaving Russia makes me cry. The opening notes to that song are some notes from In the Dark of Night. Love Gleb as a villain. Uh, I agree about that little... Uh you know, the, the, the musical, I don't know what you call it, musical montage, I guess, of what happens to the royal family without any words or explanation. It was all done with miming and music. I thought that was mm -hmm. very effective. 
Um, yeah, if it is for adults, I feel like the acting should have been toned down a little bit. Like I said, it's a little too kiddish uh, for me. And that's one of the reasons I was kind of confused. Like, you know, oh, should they put Rasputin in this? I don't know. But um, everything with the musical numbers, uh, I think, kind of makes up for that. Uh, and the villain, I don't think, is over the top. I think he's playing it just the right uh the right amount of big and subtle. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 150 bits. Since you will do the Hollywood Pictures films this year, will you review Mr. Holland's Opus and While You Were Sleeping for Disney December? Uh, was that on there? I, was, I think I was doing five movies. I can't remember that was on there. Um, if not this year, probably the following year, because I want to keep doing those films. DCL Coda, thank you for the 100 bits. So we now have people upset about Guardians being rated PG-13 because of certain content. I know the MPAA is stupid and arbitrary, but people do understand what PG-13 means, right? There's one shot. Most of it, I think this is totally fine PG-13. There is one at the end with a face being ripped off where I did say, that's an R. That's a hard R right <laughs> there. Uh, everything else, I think, is a, a pure PG-13. But yeah, that is the one shot where I was like, whoa, like, I'm having trouble looking at that. <laughs> Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, when you ever do play Kingdom Hearts Stream Drop Distance, three of the worlds are Tron Legacy, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and First Fantasia. Uh, yeah, I do remember seeing that Hunchback was in uh, one of the games and that immediately piqued my interest, so I'll probably get to that at some point. Cameron Blythe, thank you for the 100 bits. Did you ever play the South Park games on Nintendo 64? They were so bad, even Trey Parker and Matt Stone hated them. I I would only play a game on 64 if everybody said I had to play, which, thank God, was only like two or three games. <laughs> I really didn't like the Nintendo 64. Um, and I was like the perfect age to... I should say perfect age. I should, probably should have been younger, but um, I, I didn't like the technology around it. I, aside from GoldenEye and I guess Mario 64, how many people go back to play those games? How many people are like, hey, I want a game that looks like that style. It's such a good style. And nobody does. It, it's just, it, it's not good in my opinion. But there are a few that stand out. I really do think GoldenEye is still great. We played it on Tournament Tuesday uh, a couple months back and it was still really fun. <laughs> Author, thank you for the 100 bits. This is one out of two. If Peaches were to be nominated for the best original Oscar <laughs> song and even win, wouldn't it be cool slash funny that it would technically be the first villain song to win the award, at least in animation? God, yeah, I guess I guess it would be. That's really weird. <laughs> that is. Mumra, thank you for the 100 bits. The new series Muppet Mayhem was released today on Disney+. Plus. All 10 episodes are available to binge, which is cool. Just started watching it and loving it so far. Have you started it or interested in checking it out? Uh, no, it's a show? I thought it was a movie. How can you get 10 episodes out? I, like, it looked like fun, but 10 episodes. Uh, I'll try to check it out, but yeah, that's, that's weird. Author, thank you for the 100 bits. This is part two of two. I mean, remember me from Coco only, only partially counts as a villain song as it was <laughs> stolen by the villain and turned into a gaudy romance number when the original composer wrote it as a song for his daughter. Yeah, that doesn't count. That, that's, yeah, I don't know. Villain songs don't get the love they deserve, in my opinion. They're almost always the best songs, in my opinion. <laughs> DCL Coda, thank you for the 100 bits. I don't know if you've seen it, but the following was on a picket sign for the writer's strike. Pay us or I will climb the WB, pa WB Tower and release the Animaniacs. I swear to God. Just I saw that. thought you'd get a kick out of it. Yeah, I, I did see that. That made me laugh very hard. You know, that is the nice thing about a writer's strike is that the uh, signs are going to be very well written. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your top three favorite Bob and Louise episodes? Uh... I always have a soft spot for the one where they're lost in the, uh, not the aquarium, uh, what the, where plants are. Uh, botanical garden? Thank you, yes. Uh, they're lost in botanical garden. She accidentally lets it slip that she wants to take over the business. And I don't know, it just warms my heart when he goes, oh my God, am I your hero? And she's like, no, 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 no I, I am totally your hero. Like that is just the most heartwarming, like, oh my God. Like that, I don't know, that is so sweet to me. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Will there be a review of the Jeff Bridges film Fearless for its 30th anniversary? It's such an amazing underrated film. I'm sure there's a lot to talk about the film. Oh my God. That's one of my favorite movies. That's an amazing film. I can't believe it's 30 years old. Uh, man, for an, I can't see doing it as a nostalgia critic, uh, but maybe just, 
maybe just a standalone video or say i don't know it's it's good it's rough it's a rough film to get through but uh yeah it, it's it's spectacular have you ever seen that one heather no i haven't so good it, it, there's a lot of downer moments it, it's got a lot of downer stuff but it's uh oh it's so good such a good movie fbl thank you for the hundred bits thoughts on the show reservation dogs the sh oh uh is that a I've reality seen... show? Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, my bad. Uh, I think I've seen an ad for it. I've never seen the show itself. Uh, you tell me. So they good? <laughs> I have no. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. A Pagan Priest, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, I'm meeting Don Bluth at GalaxyCon Raleigh. <laughs> What's your favorite Don Bluth film? Oh, Secret of Nim. Uh, but my favorite project is probably a uh, small one. I really like that one. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Who would you say is the funniest movie character of the 2020s so far? Uh, funniest movie character? Man, I'd have to see, like, what movies have come out. I'm so terrible at, like, well, I guess 2020 itself didn't really have a lot of movies, the more I think about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, man, I'd have to look at, like, uh, oh, uh, I feel like that to be someone from Puss in Boots, maybe. Ooh. Uh uh yeah i guess i'll say uh no shit i don't know now I'm looking through all these i'm like yes no maybe i don't know um oh uh ugly sonic from the chip and dale rescue rangers movie love <laughs> that, made that. Me laugh so hard cameron blight thank you for the hundred bits what are your thoughts on the south park episode mr hanky's christmas classics i watch it every christmas i forget which one that is because there's a couple mr hanky episodes mr hanky honestly doesn't do much for me but i do love the one i don't know if he was in it but where uh they have to say no santa has to save jesus and after you know he gets shot and jesus or no 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 jesus saves santa and after and jesus like gets shot and santa's just like you know we really should make this day in memory of him uh, this this jesus and and how he died for us just like i think this holiday should really be about him i thought that was so clever <laughs> Author, thank you for the 100 bits. In preparation for the remake of The Little Mermaid releasing in two weeks, starting next Thursday, I'm cutting myself off from social media until I see it opening day so I can form my own opinion without being influenced by others. As such, I might not make your streams, but I will try to catch up later on. Oh, sure. Yeah, just just do you know, whatever you gotta do. I'm, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm usually pretty good at separating that. Um... Yeah, well, again, you can see even with Guardians 3, I mean, everybody loves that, and I, I didn't really get into it. Um, but I can see how someone can be tainted going into something, or there's definitely been movies that have been built up to me too much for me or, like, hated too much for me, and then I'm like, well, it wasn't that bad, even from the hate. So um, I see where you're coming from with that. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the horror movie Hide and Seek? Oh, I liked it. Uh I could kind of see the ending coming, but it's one of those where you kind of hope it's the ending you think it is. Uh, yeah, it, it's a fun idea, too. I, I really enjoyed it. CJ Noel Lopez, thank you for the 100 bits. What biography movie would you like to see? I'd like to see one on Jim Henson. I read a script mm. for a proposed mm. one a studio wanted to do. It's really good, but so sad. Uh, I always thought there was going to be one on Disney. Uh, mm. and they didn't do it, uh, you know, but like an honest one, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. There was one about like Disney before Mickey or something like that about losing Oswald, which is also very interesting. Uh, I always say I like to see one about Termite Terrace, about the making of the Looney Tunes. I think that'd be, I always hear some fun stories around there. Uh, I think that'd be cool. Alexander, thank you for the hundred bits. <clears throat> Top three favorite animated films based on animated series. Uh, animated films based on animated series. Uh, Oh. I know, I gotta think about that. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, I'd have to, like, look it up, because it's like, I, I'm, like, totally blanking. Films based... Uh, maybe we can go to the next one while uh, while I look these up. Yeah, because I, I feel really bad about that. Ooh, Mask of the Phantasm. Good choice, McDonald. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. really good. Oh, a lot of these are like TV movies, too. Ah, ah. All right. Um, that's actually it for the bit messages, but we will oh, look at some highlighted oh, oh, here. Oh, 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 so we do have time. All right. Yeah, cool. we got yeah. we got some time to breathe here. Let's see. Uh, oh, uh, again, it's always hard for me to say it's good, but I do like it. Uh, I like the original Ninja Turtles movie a lot. Mm. Um, and uh, I mean, there's, there's 
Batman 89? Nah, probably not. That's no. Uh, that, that shouldn't count. Um, uh, it's like, they're going backwards. Like, here's shows based on movies. No, the other way around. I want the other way around. Um, yeah, boy, not as much as popping up as I thought. Uh, I feel like, yeah, Mario wouldn't count because, again, that was a game first. It's based on the games. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing that many. Uh, it, just because it popped up here and I can't find much else. Maybe the Chipmunk Adventure, I guess. Um Oh, and actually, I like the DuckTales movie, uh, too. I thought that was pretty fun. But, yeah, I kind of thought there'd be a lot more. Huh. Uh, Ramirez says, last week when I mentioned that Bugs Bunny movie, you were ref you were referring to Bye Bye Bunny, but I was talking about the one that was reportedly announced. Um, and when I said, who would you cast, I meant who would cast in the movie with Bugs. Oh, like, alongside him. Um you know, I would, because you think, someone zany like Jack Black or something like that. But after watching Elf again, I think you would need someone that has some subtle reaction. I would get like a James Caan or something like that. Like someone that actually has some really subtle reactions to it. You know, like a Helen Mirren or something like that. Just somebody that can really underplay it uh, in a way that I think would be very, very interesting. I, I don't think do the big zany stuff because you already have, uh, you know, the Looney Tunes for that. Elite Gamer says, so question for you, Doug. Have you seen or heard of the new Disney show Moon Girl? It's based on a Marvel character and the show has possible ties to the greater MCU. It's been getting good reviews. I hope you, Heather, and of course, Chaplin, have a great night. Uh, no, honestly, I wanted to wait and see what people said because the style looks awesome. Like that is like a cool, cool style. Uh, but again, just I have so much stuff to watch. I kind of wanted to see if it was worth it or if someone brings it up. Uh, it says, like, yeah, no, you got to check out the show. It's totally worth it. I, I might just check it out again just to kind of see the style of it because, uh, I, I don't know, that's such a unique look. And it looks imaginative. It looks fun. Um, so, again, I was kind of waiting to see if it got uh, a lot of praise or not. So uh, I'll try to check it out because, yeah, it does pop up every once in a while. I'm like, oh, I want to. Is that good? I hope it's good because it looks good. <laughs> Oliver Dreamwalker says, Doug, if you're still planning to make an NC written by AI, keep in mind that depending on the AI that you use to write it, the script will range from very boring and predictable to completely nonsensical, but, but grammatically correct. The nonsensical one is the one I want. We, it's funny because when somebody brought that up, I was trying to look it up more to see what... Um, uh, like which one we should use. and Because I think it was still kind of primitive at the time but now it's like just ai is exploding like mad right now so now it's like well which one do we choose that'll get the most entertaining one uh so yeah it's right now it's kind of on the back burner but uh yeah it is still it's in there we're still kind of thinking like yeah maybe down the road that'd be good to do uh master mario says what is more likely finding the holy grail and jesus coming back or bill watterson showing himself to the world and making more kelvin and hobbs Oh, Jesus, coming back, clearly. I mean, he at least said he'd come back. Bill Watterson, I think, made it very clear he didn't want to come back. <laughs> Power Gamer says, who's your favorite Owl House character so far? Uh, let's go through the list of characters here. Um, I kind of like, I forget his name, but the the little boy whose voice changes in the middle of seasons. Uh, I don't know, he's one of those characters, like, all his deliveries are... No, I take it back! Uh, uh, Amity, actually, I, I think is my favorite, because talk about just going from a one-note bully to slowly but surely becoming the most interesting character in the show in one season! That's like taking Malfoy, and instead of, like, maybe the last two movies, you make him interesting, to, like, suddenly making him that interesting at the end of the first movie. Like, that was really, really cool that they did that. I really thought that was going to be, like, my least favorite character, and she's actually, like, the most interesting. Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Glad to hear you're getting into Owl House Season 2, especially as it's touching touching to darker elements the creator wanted from the beginning. P.S. If you like the mom episode, can't wait till you see the dad episode. Both hit hard. Yeah, they were teasing that uh, there was a dad in there, too, so I was curious to see uh, what they do with that. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, because uh, Rob just started watching it, too, and he was saying, like, yeah, I actually really get into the dark sense of humor that it has and kind of the dark world and everything so it's funny that they're saying yeah well season two is where we get the dark that we want i was like i don't know i already thought it had some good dark tones in there at least uh from a comedic standpoint it has some good dark humor 
Cameron, thank you for the 100 bits. If Inside Out is announced as a world in Kingdom Hearts 4, I'm hoping they memories come together to make a Keyblade. Oh, that'd be cool. It's funny because I love Inside Out as a movie. I didn't know how it would work as a... Um... No, you know it'd be cool? If they do that, but you don't go inside Riley's head. Maybe you start off in Riley's head, but then you go into like a villain's head or something like that mm. and see the different design. Or like even that'd Sora's. Be, yeah, or Sora, any of that. Yeah, man, with the backstory he has and all the stuff he's gone through. Like, how cool would it be to go inside like his mind? Like, that'd be cool. That'd, that'd be taking that idea and really like, because obviously that guy loves designing worlds and he's really good at it. Uh, you know, so I'm like, well, what could you do that would add something new on top of that? Like, that'd be a cool... Uh, way to do it. Spooky Elephant Elephant says, Doug, when you review Little Mermaid, are you going to go full dad at the aquarium with ocean puns? <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess and say there's going to be other things to talk about aside from that. Honestly, I'll just let the movie do that. I'm just assuming it's going to be half the jokes. I know a guy says, do you think you'll review the first Spider-Verse or Transformers in honor of Across the Spider-Verse or Rise of the Beasts? I thought about doing the first spider-verse um i don't know it's one of those where there's so much to talk about i don't even know how i would contain it in one review um i don't know how i go about it uh so i don't know I, with the transformers i was talking about maybe just doing like all the movies in one clump uh because i've technically reviewed them but they're kind of like joke reviews so uh that might be interesting to talk about I know a guy says, this was just announced, but Disney Plus and Hulu will be merging by the end of the year. Like into one thing? I, I guess. Say, aren't, aren't they already, they're owned by the same people, I think. They are. Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, it, it, well, I'll say this. When I went to uh, Scotland, all the ads had like Hulu shows that were advertised on Disney Plus. So they're, yeah, they're already like doing that there. Disney Star or something in other yeah. places in other countries? Yeah, something like that. But like, it just includes Hulu and even FX. Like, I, it was so weird seeing, oh wait, watch, Always Sunny in Philadelphia on Disney Plus. Like, huh? Like that they just merged them together already there. So maybe they're going to do that? I don't know. Um, I think that would make sense. I, I mean, it would save on going in between, you know, uh, obviously in between streams and stuff like that. But um yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. It's always weird seeing it combine, you know, like Deadpool on Disney Plus. You know what I mean? Like that does feel a little weird, but it's like, I don't know. It's got to happen at some point. It probably already has. Kenton Play Stuff, thank you for the 100 bits. If Kingdom Hearts were to include any of the Disney Channel cartoons, which would you like to see the most? I think Gravity Falls might be a pretty good choice. Uh, honestly, now, probably Owl House. I really do like that world. I like the different shapes of the buildings and the creatures and stuff like that gravity falls would be fun but i like i feel like you get bored with it after like 10 minutes you know what i mean because it is a bunch of woods and you know just sort of in jokes and stuff where i feel like something like owl house you could really get crazy with honest reviewer thank you for the 100 bits almost forgot thoughts on luz's doppelganger and who are who they are uh it's loose i think you sorry so that, but, I, uh, i've never seen it i'm sorry uh yeah i don't know there was talk I don't think this is spoilers because I don't know. Uh, but uh, there was talk about another human that like there wasn't the first human to go there and stuff like that. Like maybe that's it. when Luce got there. Maybe the other human went into the human world. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really sure yet. That's one of the reasons I uh, am so intrigued. Again, I like just so quickly in the season two, I'm like, what's going on kind of thing where that was kind of my least favorite stuff in season one. So I'm really impressed how quickly they sucked me into it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And that brings us to eight o'clock. So thank you all so much as usual for joining us here today. We appreciate every single one of y'all. Um, we do have content here five days a week, Monday through Friday. So come on back. Tamara will be on tomorrow. Melkin will be on on Friday. Doug will be on on Friday, continuing to be a Jedi who is doing some surviving. Um, and then we'll start it all again on Monday. Um, so hopefully we will see you all soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We're all going to go raid Tamara right now. Um, so we can go say hello to Tamara Chambers, the Tamara Chambers from the internet, mm -hmm. from the Nostalgia Critic. Doug, have you ever heard of the Nostalgia Critic? Yeah, yeah. Uh... I hear he's a douche, you know, awesome. we're playing the video games and getting angry all the time. Yeah, no, no fun. Mm -hmm. 
great. All right, everyone. <laughs> have a <laughs> wonderful evening, and we will see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Thank